So today we're going to be making this instant film slash Polaroid picture display thingy. I don't know, I thought it'd be a good idea to make something to kind of uh, use for maybe like weddings or just an event that you, you know, have memories or some sort. So that's what we're gonna be making. So let's get to it. All right, so first I'm going to show you how not to do this and then we're gonna get into how to do this with the low lowest impact when it comes to render times. I initially went into it saying, okay, I want 44 images because it sounds like a good number for maybe an overview for like a wedding or an event, something of that nature. And so I just to decided to, <laughs> To, to do all 44 in one project, right? Well, as much as I wanted to optimize this, this kind of didn't work because I, I don't know why. I To this day, I still don't know why. Um, I optimized it and it worked perfectly fine in Fusion. It was working flawlessly. There was a lot of uh, things that I added that now I pulled out, but this was working perfectly fine in Fusion. Then I jump over to the edit page and when I'm on the edit page, the textures aren't loading, meaning like the images, because everything is a 3D object, the images weren't loading. It was very bizarre and I, it took me a while to figure out that, okay, maybe there's something going on here that I can't do or maybe the integration with uh, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion just isn't there yet. But when I was in on the uh, uh, Fusion page, it was working fine, edit page it wasn't. So um, things that I learned from that, uh, <laughs> kind of just to split everything up and make it smaller. Um, so this looks kind of intense, but if you really look at it for each image, there aren't that many nodes. Like this is all just for one image, the ones that are highlighted here. And then you have all of these, and these are shared amongst all of the images. These nodes here are shared amongst all of them. Um, and then they just go down and every once in a while they're uh, copied over. And what these are is they're just different sizes. So if we look here, we have one that's wide, we have one that's tall, and there's actually one that's kind of like a square. Let me see if I can find that. So here we go, here's the square one and then both these are wide. So anyways, uh, let's actually get into building this. So I'll just go over to the other project that I have set up here and we will grab some images while that's loading. Okay, so I'll just open up my media pool. I'm gonna make one that's called images and then just bring my images in. So for now, I'm just gonna do two. And then in the main project, I believe I have this already set up, 30 frames and we're doing 19, 20, 1080. New Fusion Comp, I'm gonna make this one um, 10 seconds. Perfect. And we will just open it. So here is our media out to go back out to the timeline. And we will pull in, let's do the dog one first. So the first thing that you'll notice is that this resolution is uh, a bit big, right? And one of the things that I wanted to do is make them, you know, three different sizes all the same. So we have to, uh, you know, bring this down to like a standardized size. So the first one we're gonna do is 900 by 900. You have to remember that we're, we're, we're spitting everything out to a 1920, 1080. So these pictures are already, you know, way too big, let alone being a small box inside that big frame. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually set everything up so it's aligned to grid just to keep this clean. Bring in one background, and in this background, I'm just going to make this a transparent background, and I'll show you why here in a second. So I'm just gonna pull the alpha down so everything's zero. And if we pull it in here, um, currently it's 1920, 1080, and it's transparent, and that's why you see this. I'm actually gonna change the size of this, so I'm gonna turn off auto resolution and change this to 900. 900 and the reason why I'm doing that is because I can then take this node and use it wherever I want in the project later instead of the other way of doing this would be to use a uh, resize node to resize my image so I'm just going to bring this one in and this is going to do my resizing because I can use it later on. So what I'm gonna do next is I want to take this image and I wanna lay it over top of this 900 by 900 block. So I'm just going to come out from here and go into this out, which will add a merge. And 
when I do it that way, the uh, this background layer or node will be the background and then this one will be the foreground. So this is laying on top of this, whatever the resolution of this is. So if I play this now, now we have a 900 by 900 and we have our little picture here. If we were to set this all up where we can just copy and paste, uh, one of the things that we could do is we could come in here, we can do a transform node, and then we could use this transform node to resize the image. But um, to keep this as lightweight as possible, uh, I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use this merge because this merge uh, affects the foreground and how the foreground will get added to the background. So I can come in here and resize it and it's doing the same exact thing. Uh, the next thing I wanna do is I want to add in the cardboard that would be the white border and then the bar across the bottom. So to do that, I'm going to just take this background because it's already uh, the 900 by 900 and I'm just gonna paste it. So Control C, Control V and we're gonna make this white and we're gonna bring the alpha up so it's a solid white and now we can take this background and we're gonna lay it on top of everything that we have so far. So we're gonna come out of here and lay it on top, just like that. So now this is the foreground laying on top of the background, which is everything that's currently up to this point. So if we play this now, we just have a solid white. It's exactly where we wanna be. We're gonna grab right uh, one of these rectangles and this is a rectangle mask. We're, obvious, we're gonna mask out the area. Uh, currently it's masking this as the area, but we just want to hit invert and then there we go. Then we can come into here and we can just resize this by grabbing these or you can grab these over here, whichever works for you. And we're just gonna bring it up. And the idea here is we want the thickness here and the thickness here to be uh, relatively the same. So we'll just go like that to fill screen and that's kind of looking good. And then the other thing we can do is we can, in we can add a little bit, just a little bit uh, roundness to the corners. So we're looking pretty good so far. So the next thing that we have to add is currently this looks very flat and it's not really like a Polaroid or the instant um, film because it was like multiple, it was the cardboard around the outside, but then it was like multiple layers with like a clear plastic on the front. So it made it seem like there was a little bit of depth there. So we have to add that depth in. So I'm just gonna copy both of these that I currently have, control C, and we're gonna paste it. And then next we're going to come into this background here and clicking on just the background, we're gonna turn this black for now. And we're gonna lay this on top of everything that we have coming in so far. So now if we view this merge by just dragging it up here and releasing, that's currently what we're looking at. We're gonna next take this rectangle here and we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it. So now it's two masks working against each other. So we have the one mask and then we have the other mask. So what we're gonna do is in this first mask here, we have the border, right? In this first mask here, what we can do is we can blur the edges, right? So now we have this like little blur bit going around the outside, right? And then we have the next merge that's going to affect everything. What we're gonna do with this is we're just going to subtract it so we don't see it. So now we have that little bit there. It's a little strong, so I'm actually gonna come into my background here and, and bring up the alpha just a little bit so it's a little more transparent. So something like that. That's looking pretty good so far. All right, the next thing that we wanna add in here is we wanna add some text on here so that we can see that. And so I'm just gonna bring the text down here and I'm going to then lay the text on top of everything that we have so far. And if we view that, come into the text and I'm just gonna put in here some text. And uh, for the uh, preview that I showed you, I actually used a font called Homemade Apple. You can get it on the Google uh, fonts. That's a website that you can get fonts. And that is that. So that's currently where we're at so far. Looking pretty good. So next we uh, have to determine, are we going to make this a 2D object or is it going to be a 3D object? I opted to make everything a 3D object because I wanted to have that parallaxing effect where things that are far out into the distance move a lot slower than things that are close up to the camera. So to do that, we have to grab an image plane and then we have to grab a camera 
and a renderer. And we're gonna connect the camera to the output of the image plane, which will add a 3D merge, and then the 3D merge into the renderer. And then all we have to do is now connect this into the image plane. And if we view that, now we have it in 3D space there. And we can click on our camera, pull our camera back. So we got that. And I'm using my middle mouse to move around like this. And then if we look at our renderer over here, so our camera's really close. So now I'm gonna hold Alt and middle mouse down both together so I can rotate a little bit. And then I'm gonna hold uh, Control and middle mouse out. So I'm gonna to scroll to the zoom out. And then that's kind of where we're at so far. All right, so we have one image here. And if we were to now take everything that we have and make another one. So I'm gonna grab the girl and I'm gonna grab a text. And now we just have to connect this all up. So I'm gonna grab a merge, right? I'm gonna connect this background. Let's offset these so it's a little easier to see. And we'll bring this over and this over and this over. And we're gonna come into here so that that's the background. And then we're gonna connect this in here. Then we're gonna grab a, another merge, or click on here, grab another merge, and then connect this in. Click on this, connect another merge, bring this over, connect this down, whoops, into the green, and then connect this so it overlaps. And then we could add in another image plane. And then we connect the image plane up to the merge. So now we have two images that are here. If I click on the second image, I move it over, maybe move it back. Uh, let's move, let's have both of them visible here. So there we go. Now we have two images. If we wanted to add a background in, we could throw a background in. And then we lay all of this on the background. Oops, let's put this over here and keep all 3D close that so there we go now we could take this background or this uh, one image bring it back here maybe scale it up so it's almost the same size where is scaling I think it's in here here we go and maybe we could bring it over and we will rotate it maybe and now that it's in the back if we take our camera so let's click on our camera. I'm gonna rotate around. I'm holding Alt and middle mouse together. Now that front one is moving a little quicker. Let me make this more apparent so it's a little easier to see. I'm just gonna take that image plane and move it way up here. Move this back just a little bit. So now if I put, if I move these, you'll see that that front one, I can almost overlap this. So we can see it there and then the other one overlaps the view, right? So that's pretty much parallaxing. It's relatively simple. But one thing you'll notice is these are kind of like just merging together and it doesn't really look all that great. So one of the other things that I added in here was a drop shadow. We have to do a couple extra steps to get a drop shadow in here. So I'm gonna just take all of this, highlight it, move it down just a little bit. And let's just work on just one of these. So the other thing that you can do to make to view one is you just hit that button. So when we have two views, if you hit one, it'll display it over here. If you hit two, it'll display it over here. Just a little tip there. Okay, so next we have to add in a, uh, a drop shadow to make it seem like it, there's depth, like one's overlapping on top of the other one. So to do that, we'll bring in another background and we'll make this transparent because what we need to do now is right now it's just 900 by 900. There isn't any more resolution to add a drop shadow. So if I had to have a drop shadow, it'd be out of boundaries, obviously. So um, the easiest way to do this is just to add in a uh, another, it could be any size. It just has to be bigger than this size. So I'm just going to overlap this on top of the background. So now I have, um, the size but one thing that you'll notice is that the uh, other image because the other image was bigger 
it wasn't ever cut out. It was just not visible because we had the boundaries that are smaller. So now we have a new problem. So now how do we combat this? Well, there's, I, I initially went into it saying, okay, I know how to easily combat this. We will just do a grid warp and boom, it'll fix it, right? And then I was like, well, since I have a grid warp, we could actually make this look kind of cool. So I'll come into my grid warp and let's increase the size on this. And then maybe just a little bit here and just a little bit here. Or actually, let's go back and make this a little bit bigger. Do that again, a little bit here, a little bit there. Now, if we look at this, this could actually be like an actual like instant film. Um, and you know, that looks great and all, but what I didn't think of is that a grid warp actually does a lot of extra processing. And one of them is anti-aliasing. So when, when I had the 44 in one project and I had this, this was like all extra overhead that I wasn't initially accounting for when I was like, oh, I'm just gonna make this look cool. You know, if you have the resources, like it's either the horsepower to render it or if you have the time to render it, you know, you could render it no problem. But um, because I was going to make this a asset for people to download, uh, I didn't want to have, you know, a project that was really heavy right out of the gate. Um, if people want to add this in later, they can, but right out of the gate, I didn't want that. So instead of doing that, an easy thing you can do is just grab a, uh, rectangle mask, right? And because this merge here is not, or this uh, merge, its resolution is 900 by 900. What I can say is I want to affect the foreground by masking the image. So if I bring this into here, we're now masking the image, but this uh, rectangle will take whatever the resolution of its node that it's connected to. So if I take this to one, one, boom, now the image is just the size of whatever this is, because this is affecting the foreground. So one thing, an easy thing to think of. So I just have to add this to both of these and then we're pretty much done with that. And now if I look at this, we're back to where we were. After all of this, what I can do is I can now do shadow and I add the shadow in, and then we can increase the size on here. And let's actually make it visible. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of a shadow here. If I just for, just so for sake, so you can see it, if I just put this on top of something, let's uh, not have it black. There we go. Now we can see we have a bit of a shadow, right? Going around. So that's kind of what we want. So let me, let me get rid of both of these nodes because we don't need them. Now, if I add this into here, and I look at everything, now we have a bit of a shadow. Obviously it needs some work. I can maybe soften it out a bit and not have it so harsh. So something like that. So now these two images, they look separate. They don't look the same. So that is an easy way. And with the parallaxing, so if I was to make this two, and then my uh, camera, and I move this, now we can you know, distinctly see that there's two there and that one's over top of the other one. So that was an easy thing. And all we would have to do here is just come in here, add a merge, bring it over, connect this in, and then uh, control T to flip them, copy this, break that, paste it in here. And now they both have it. Um, the only thing that we have to do now is come into here and make this bigger. Because now that image is, there we go. So that's kind of how I how I did that. Um, it's not that difficult. I guess I could add some text here. And then we'll do the homemade apple. I don't see it. Let's uh, change the color and then maybe move it down here. There we go, perfect. Now if we view everything, oops, there we go. So that was kind of how we did it. Now the next thing 
that you really have to do to, to sell this is you just have to make camera moves and you have to set up a whole bunch of these and it's pretty simple. So now you have this one is, uh, we can leave that where it's at. We don't really need to mess with that one. Let me just move it over here. Uh, but these, let's move these down just a little bit. So now we have everything that we need and all we have to do is just take these here and what I ended up doing because I have I had a couple of different sizes, I just color coordinated them. So now I know that you know the, the square one is just this size. And then all we have to do is just take all of this, copy it, control C, control V to paste it, add another one here, and then we just change the color, and then you just come into these and you change the resolution so that all of these resolutions match and you might need to work with the uh, masks to make them work with the new resolution. But then there you have the second variant. So if I just come into here and I do like, uh, let's do 700 by 900. Let's come into here, 700, and then into this one. And we could just simply connect this up the same exact way. So let's take all of these and move them up. And instead of, let's move this one over here. And we can just connect this one in. And connect this one here, connect this one here, connect this one here. So now just updating it by moving. Now we have our two sizes. There we go. You know, I might want to move the uh, move the box up a little bit, so we could just come into this node here, and then here we would just move this up just a little bit, and then I'll just copy that one and delete these two, paste it, bring it in, Control C, Control V, just turn this to subtract, take this feather it. Let's take a look at everything that we have so far. Maybe feather it a little bit more. There we go. And now I have two different sizes and I actually might want to move the text up just a little bit to get that centered. And if we view everything, there we go. Obviously that was just working quickly. I might want to actually then take this 3D object and maybe scale it down a little bit. But it's it's looking a little wa wonky. I might actually bring this down just a little bit, but that's, that's pretty much the idea here. And you can just continuously keep creating and then just pulling from one of the sizes that you previously had. It's that simple. So then, you know, going on from here, it's just getting the camera moves to look nice and, you know, moving from one to the other to the other. Uh, additionally, what you could do is you could get rid of these here and then you just have this and with a transparent background. If you come over to the edit page, we could come into here, bring in our fusion comp. We'll actually lift it up just a little bit and we'll close that, come into generators, solid color, bring that in and we will change this to a color that will work for our project. And now if we look at it, if it's done right, let's come back. I never connected the media out. So let's connect that up and there we go. Now we have whatever color we make this solid here. Uh, additionally, in the pr download project that I have in the description, I added a couple of other little things in there. I added noise grain and then I added light leaks. Light leaks are a little difficult, but if you wanted to make um, noise, like a, a grain here, if you come over to the edit page, uh, or excuse me, if you come over to the color page, you can come into here and you can go into film, I believe. You can get film grain, 
you can do that. You have to have the studio version, but if you don't have the studio version, what you can do is you can come over into uh, Fusion and you could get uh, TV. You can get the TV and you turn off this one and turn off this one. And let's bring in that background again. Let's get a color and we'll layer this on the on here. So then what we would do is we'd come out of here into here. And now if we take a look at this and we move up a little bit and actually view this, now we have noise. You see that? Now we have noise, but one thing to keep in mind here is that this is going to be extra compute power and it's a little bit on the heavy side uh, when you get going. The only thing that you have to make sure of is this randomizer. You would just come to the beginning, uh, you know, keyframe it at whatever, and come to the end of it, and then just pick like a random number like three. And then throughout this, it'll continuously keep changing. Uh, and that's to get the random noise to get it to um, keep moving. In the project that I have as the download file, I have a rendered out version um, that you can that you can get that you don't have to worry about that. Um, but if you don't want to get it, perfectly fine. Um, that's how you would get grain in here to add that. The only other thing that I then added was I came into here and I ended up adding a color grade on top of everything. But that's pretty much it on how I made it. It's not that difficult. Um, the biggest thing is taking the time to make camera moves. So if you're going to make the camera moves, I guess I really didn't talk about that, but if you were coming to here, you would take your camera and the easiest way to do this is get the 3D look view like this. And we actually go two windows and then we will also get the rendered out version like this. So now we see both of these. And when you're moving your camera around, you're gonna obviously keyframe it. So like maybe keyframe it, let's bring the, it in just a little bit more. So we would keyframe it. So like, let's say we have it like this, come to the beginning, come over here, and you have the different things depending on what you're doing. If you're gonna be rotating it, I doubt, but you could rotate it like this, I guess. Uh, but if you end up rotating it, and then you could just keyframe everything that you are doing in your move. And then, you know, you come up to wherever it is and you make your other keyframe like that. And then in between, the camera will move throughout that uh, animation. And then the idea here is that to get through from one to the other, you just have to have smooth animations going from one to the other to the other to make it look good. And that just is, a, you know, it takes time and going into your spline tool editor and just coming into here and then um, easing these. There's a couple of different ways that you can do this, but you can come into here and I've talked about like doing the flatten by just hitting F and then you have your ease in and ease out. Um, and just hit Alt to get the linear or you could do like um, smoothing and that's like a whole nother uh, way and that actually smooths this path in here. So if I was to make three points, so let's come in and make a point like this. So if I did this, what this is going to do and I hit F, these are all gonna stay the same, but it's going to ease through each one. If I make them linear again, but now I hit uh, Alt S, now you see that it's smoothing it, but you have to keep in mind that this move here was a linear move, but now it made it smooth, so now it's dipping below. I don't know if you can see that, it's dipping down and then up to make this a whole smooth transition. So in here, it's going to be low. Obviously, this isn't working here. Um, so it's a, just a bit of finesse to get this to look right. Um, and it's honestly just like a taking time to learn how all of the um, different ways like the camera moves work. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how you would go about doing that. And then I think there was only one other thing that I ended up doing. So let's take a step back. When I made my first project and it looked great and I had a whole bunch of different effects. So I had motion blur, I had depth of field, I had subsampling. Um, 
when I did all of that, my render times for the project, I think it was two minutes, 50 seconds um, for the project with the 44 images. The render times, the first time I did it was nine hours and some change. And I was like, okay, well, that's a very heavy project. And some people don't have the same compute power that I have. I know some have more powerful, but some people work on laptops and such. So I was like, that's not something that I'm willing to ship. So then I had to you know, go back and, and try to figure out something. So then I just took out the fancy things. So I took out motion blur, took out the depth of field, and I took out uh, subsampling. And when I did that, I got down to two, I think it was like two and a half hours. And I was like, that's a lot better, but I feel like I can do a little bit better. And then the project that I ended up shipping takes uh, 40 minutes-ish. It's right around the 40 minute mark. And I was like, okay, that, that's a lot better than, you know, where it previously was and everything looks pretty much the same. Um, and if people do have the resources to you know do the other things they can just add those in because it's not that difficult to just you know do a couple of check boxes and then you have all the fancy stuff so the way in which that i went from the two hours to the 40 minutes was i went through everything that's on the node tree and i stated it when it would be uh, processed and when it wasn't processed and to do that we would just simply go through. So let's uh, we look at our at our shot here, and I would say, okay, this is going to be kind of difficult with this current camera move. But here here's the perfect example. So from frame zero to frame uh, 54, we don't see this particular. Um, image here so we can actually not have that rendered currently how it is it's going to be rendered but it's not going to be visible by the camera and we're not working with any type of reflections or or anything that would be affecting lighting because we don't have any lighting so we don't actually have to uh, have that rendered so what we can do is we can come into all of these nodes i believe it's this shot or this image no it's the top one okay so we come into all of these nodes and we can come into keyframes and let's just have just select it and we'll open this up and bring this up just a little bit and we'll click this button and then we will click all of this stuff and we will have it start at frame 54. So now everything goes back to 54 and then that's when it is all being displayed. So let me show you once I have that all set up. There it's at 54, so if I come over here, now it's not visible, it's not, all those nodes aren't being processed. I come into here, where it's actually, let me close this so we can actually see the final output. All right. So now it's visible, so now it's being processed, but here, um, it's not being processed. So all of this time, it's not being processed. <clears throat> once it's actually in frame, then we actually see it. So that was one of the other steps that I had to go through and do. Um, so I didn't have to, so that those things weren't being uh, processed. Um, but yeah, that's a step where don't even worry about it unless your render times are really long and you're trying to you know, shave a little bit here and there. Because if your computer is fast enough, you're gonna spend more time setting all of those nodes up when in reality, your computer can just chug through all of that and you know that doesn't make that big of a difference it might make you know two minutes on a, you know a 30 minute or 40 minute render uh, it's not that big of a deal compared to you know if you're working with a lower end machine those things can really impact your render times um so that's kind of what I worked on for the past week trying to figure out because I just couldn't wrap my head around it why Everything was working perfectly fine on the Fusion page, but then on the edit page, there was some strange stuff going on there, and I'm, I'm still not sure. But yeah, you know, I made a post about it. We'll see if I actually get some feedback. Um, but yeah, that's kind of uh, where we're at to this point. Once you have whatever it is, so like this stuff I, I'm not going to keep because I want it to be just like this, and I will then add like I have in this project here. 
I will just add the noise above this and then I don't have to process it because it's already video and it just overlaid on top of everything. So uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of it for this project. If you want to support me, I have the link down below on where you can download the project that I ended up making that I think actually turned out really good and I'm proud of it. Uh, but with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any ideas, suggestions, leave them down below. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.